I was able to see my screen. Thank you for joining. Uh, so we are going to start a new batch of uh, Pega training for version 8.7. And uh, this is the first class. Uh, so whoever are females, uh, you guys can let me know what is your expectation from the course. Uh, but today's session will be more of an introduction. If you're not speaking, you can go on mute. So let's kick start the session. Uh, I'm assuming uh, we have people from all the backgrounds from uh, IT as well as non IT backgrounds. And uh, the intention here is trying to learn this particular software, which is known as Pega. Uh, before we go there, let's try to understand what we are trying to achieve by learning this, right? Uh, let's try to see how exactly are we trying to, you know, achieve what we are uh, learning here. Uh, I would start with the first question uh, by asking myself what is uh, a software, right? What is a software? A basic understanding of a software, if you ask me, uh, for example, uh, years before, uh, if I had to, like, you know, uh, interact with someone, I literally had to write a letter, right? Around 20 years before, uh, you wrote letters for correspondence, right? But the telecom industry identified this as a problem, right? The message was reaching after so many days. For example, if someone died, to notify them, you had to do a telegram or you had to send a letter. By the time it reaches, they won't even know like when this person died. To cover that problem, telecom industry like you know they did some research and they came up with like you know calling right you can call and you can fix that problem fine same thing happened for messages also you were able to send sms now all right sms service which is the sms service using which you wrote. but how for example if someone wanted to talk over a video that wasn't possible lately till the uh, the, uh, the dot com bubble India, it took so many years for us to get on video, right? Video calling, getting enabled was a big challenge. Though it got enabled, it was only limited to people who have internet, right? Internet or, you know, BSNL connection to be more precise. Only people who have BSN connection could do a video call with someone. You know, no one knew what exactly was happening. The industry identified all these problems and then it came up with something a uh, video conversation applications, right? Like WhatsApp, right? You do have Telegram. And Google also has a lot of uh, through Gmail also you can do video calls. So all these video call video calling apps came to be. So what are we trying to do here? We are trying to solve a problem, right? The problem here was communication was not happening between uh, between people so to address that they found this particular way of addressing all these challenges the challenges of communication was first addressed by introducing calling over wired phones then people could send SMS also and then video calling came in right uh, lately like from past 10 years or 15 years at least you have 
you know whatsapp telegram and other applications using which you are interacting so this is how we are solving a real world problem right what is software software is nothing but solving a real world problem it's all about solving a real world problem for example if you had to check a blood pressure of someone you had to literally go to a doctor and get that thing done but today even you, your watch tells you what's your blood pressure and what's your how's your pulse rate and stuff like that your heart rate and stuff like that right who did this like people like you and me who are engineers who sat together and figured out okay there is this problem we need to address and we have to you know solve this problem is what they thought and they solved it right yes or no do we understand what is software now something which will help you solve a real world problem could be for conversation we did through whatsapp telegram and stuff in the same way in medical industry if you see so many tools and softwares are using which they have solved the problem right when you go to any a hospital if you have already registered there yeah, they can see your previous records but just by giving your phone number right they ask you your phone number and they see that all your data is already saved why because there is a software in place which is taking care of that but someone is building this software right someone is building this software like people like you and me who are worried about how exactly will this problem be solved are thinking about this and they are solving this problem yes or no like previously like 20 years before if you had to get something you had to literally go in a line and get uh, your ration card and get the stuff done in a, in a municipality right but today you have your aadhar card and stuff like that most of the stuff has been modernized whatever this thing happening is it modernization they are, they are modernizing whatever is existing the legacy the existing stuff is called legacy because it's previous it's stale it's no more uh, effective so they are uh, revamping that and moving towards this right so that is what we are trying to do so to do that we need software software is nothing but it will solve such problems do you understand what is software perfect so similarly every bank also has a software right every bank today if you see now you don't have to go in line and do the transactions today we do everything over the phone like you know uh, there we use uh, phone pay right and lot other lot of other uh, applications like google pay and you have amazon pay right all these applications what are they doing they are helping you transfer funds without even going to bank don't you think so much effort and time is saved for for people yes or no perfect so now we understand software helps us solve problems but what are we trying to learn here for example uh, if I, if we have to build any software for example phone pay or google pay or amazon pay or whatsapp for a matter of fact all these things needs some technology right to build software you need technology right like as you need uh, bricks and mortar to build a home right the same way to build a software you need technology what is a technology technology could be anything languages is one thing language there are so many languages you need so many languages right for example java c c++ right python there are so many you know we, i can keep naming them and there are so many languages using this using which you can build a software but today for example a person who is not from uh, it background so someone who doesn't understand you know zeros and ones how exactly a compiler is going to interpret a certain instruction for him building software is really challenging why because he hasn't had a background in engineering or in his degree he didn't do take computer science where he understood how what are data structures all about and stuff so for people like that we do have low code platforms before we go there let's understand what does a application have okay let's say i am sbi right for example if i have to interact with sbi if sbi has to give a software service software service for a customer what can he do so SBI has to build a website for them, right? If you go, if I do SBI, uh, yeah, so it should take me to the web application. While this is opening, so if I have to 
you know, if State Bank of India has to provide you a service over internet, they need to build a software for that. What does that mean? They need to have a page, right? They need to have a page. See, so what SBI has done from their local bank, they are now, they are now on internet. When I go for online.sbi.sbi, it is bringing me here. What is this? This is SBI's user portal. Yes or no? This is SBI's user portal where they are telling, okay, we are offering all these options. What is that? Mobile banking, you can do mobile banking. There's a corporate website. There's SBI Elite Pay. But someone has built this, right? Whatever I see right now on my screen, any screen which you see is something which a user is seeing. So what we call, whatever you see right now is called as user interface. User interface is nothing but every screen you see is a interface for user. Yes or no? It's a fancy word, but if when you try to break that word, you understand that User interface is nothing but every screen you see is a user interface. SBI's user interface is this. Right? SBI's user interface is this. Right? SBI's user interface is this. But how is this built? I am telling, okay, this is a user interface. But how is this built? To understand that, if I right click on this thing and I see, I say view page source. For example, this huge bunch of code which you see here. What is this? This is telling, okay, uh, uh, this is basically HTML. If you see, it starts with HTML and they, they, do, they do have few tags of HTML and they also have embedded certain scripts, which is JavaScript. See, there is also CSS, stuff like that. So what I'm trying to say here is a user interface needs all these things. So we understand whatever we see here, for example, SBI's website, this is a user interface a user is seeing. To build that, we need technologies right or languages we need languages like html angular uh, react right css and javascript right just to build a user interface like that you need all these languages you need to someone needs to know all these languages perfect so now we understand this is a user interface Every time you go to SBI and give your details, it pulls out your details, right? Right? Whenever you go to SBI, you give your credentials, uh, it shows you how does he do that? How does SBI website know when you give your username and password, it has to pull out your details? That is because your details are saved in database. The next piece which comes as part of a software development is database. First thing is user interface, which we saw, right? Every application has a user interface, right? Next thing is database. Every every application needs a database. For example, just take your phone. Some when someone gives you his phone number, you store it in that. Why do you do that? Because there is a memory, so that you, when next time when you have to call, you are going to look up. For example, his name. okay, if there is a person, if I have to look up, to I have to give his name. You can't remember his number, right? You don't. You never save his number in his name, right? You just save the number by giving his name. Why do you save it like that? Because there is a memory where you can stack it up. Same thing is true for SBI, right? SBI can't keep in writing the writing down the name. So they want a place where they can store all this data, right? That is nothing but database, right? But to store this data, you know, you need few languages. If you say uh, DB database, if I do W three C SQL. You know, this brings me to a place where you can see how exactly you can interact with the database. For example, see, if I do, if I want to know with how many customers are there for SBI, I do a select star from customers and this returns me uh, how many, how many, uh, how many records are there. For example, if I have to look up for all the number of uh, users in SBI, I can go into their database and run some such script, right? But that is again a language, right? To do any database operation, you need to know SQL language, right? So how many languages it is right now? 
if you see for user interface you need html angular react css javascript and for database at least you need sql what is sql it's sequential query language it's sequential query language why is this used to interact with database if you want to talk to database database that is doesn't understand english it doesn't understand Kannada. it doesn't understand hindi it has its own language in which it can respond you can't go out to a database and tell okay pull out all the users who are present in your system no it has a certain syntax and the way a language it understands that is nothing but sql that's what sql is so we know to build a software you need a user interface you need a database right right are we sure are you understanding this right and you also need business logic right for example when you go to sbi and you deposit for example 10000 rupees right you deposit 10000 rupees and the balance what should the balance show for example if your balance was zero when you go and deposit 10000 rupees shouldn't the balance show 10000 rupees as your balance right that's your gross balance right who does that like who who in the software who in the software does the logic what is logic when you try to try deposit the total should increase right when you try to add some money to your deposit the total should increase or increase right so who has to do this business logic the business logic also is done through a software and there are languages to write business logic what languages can you can use to uh, write business logic you use java c c++ python ruby rails all these are languages which are used to write business logic what do we mean by business logic for example I go to Zomato, right? Or, for example, any any website, right? In Amazon, when you go and try to purchase something, you add items and you subtract items. You see that the total keeps increasing. When you try to add items, you'll see the number shows as two, three, four. It keeps increasing, right? And then based on that, the uh, the the total, the tax, everything keeps varying. Yes or no? Does it happen? Who is doing that? Someone has written something at the back end which is doing that logic for you. Do we agree? That is being done using these languages. Right? Using these languages. These languages are being used to do that. So, in order to become a developer, to develop a software application, you need you know uh, a ui developer a business logic developer and a database developer at least these three folks should be there but you know having these three guys involved and in developing a software becomes really really challenging you know because it's become first of all it becomes expensive you need to have three folks for everything second thing uh, to maintain this also is a very big challenge because he writes in his own language ui developer writes stuff in his own language business logic guy like writes in his own language and database developer also writes in his own language people have been doing develop all these it industries have been doing development so far but they have failed in the sense like they are not able to maintain it further that is why they came up with a new concept called low coding platform low coding platform low coding or no coding platform where you don't need to know coding to develop application no coding platform where you don't need to know you know you don't need to know coding to develop any any of these softwares right so whatever this is called as 
the previous approach which we saw where the software is developed by a UI developer, business process developer, and data developer. If this is a traditional approach of development, which is slow. What are the drawbacks with traditional approach? It is slow, too much dependency on too many people, right? And development is really hard. If you are, if you don't know these languages, you can't develop the application at all. Anything goes wrong, you need to have an expert to fix it. Not anyone can do it. But low coding platforms are built in such a way that anyone can code. Anyone who can read and write English can build software application or enterprise application. I myself, I am a mechanical engineer. I started, I did my mechanical engineering and then I switched into software. I learned software and I have been developing this from past 13 years. I do have 13 years of uh, IT experience of which around uh, 11 years of uh, Pega BPM experience. And I've been doing this for a long time. That's why I've chosen it to, to be calm. So now that we understood what is a software, what is traditional development, and we are talking something about low coding platform and no coding platform. Okay. But let us think what is an application, for example, right? Uber is an application. Yes. We have Uber is an application. Right? Uber, what do we do? You can book rides. Now you can also order foods, right? You can order food also. So what they saw, they were like, they saw that, okay, there are no more cabs, uh, no cabs through uh, through application where they can book a ride and go. So they found out that problem. They fixed it by having booking rides, right? And also they, what they found is, okay, people also want food at their home. They don't want to move their, uh, move themselves. So they want food at their doorstep. So what they said, okay, we can also, you can also order food on Uber and it is called as Uber Eats, right? The Uber Eats, you see. Okay, online food ordering company. This is a online food ordering company, right? What you can do, you can order food from anywhere using Uber Eats. What they did, they identified. Okay, there is a problem in this thing. Let us fix it by doing this. So literally, what they are trying to do here. For example, if we have to solve such a problem, what are we trying to do here? Let's say we are Uber Eats. What have they done? They just built a software application saying, okay, find your address. So they are letting the user find your address. And then, for example, they figure out there is a hotel close by and they want to order, let's say, Italy, right? We're ordering Italy, let's say, right? Ordering Italy, I can call it as placing order, right? Place order, right? What would be the third step? You have to confirm whether this is, these are like for how many you want and stuff like that. Confirm the order, right? And then, what do you do? Payment, right? And then, last step is delivery. Do we agree to this? So, all, all that we did is, like, Uber Eats, is this a business? Uber has a business, right? Can I call this as business? Perfect. So this, the below steps which we have fine grained, is this the process using which I can order a food on Uber? And this is being managed by Uber, right? Do we agree? This app 
in the sense for example if there is any delay who will you contact are you going to contact your mom and tell mom there is delay in uber eats no you're going to contact uber eats and tell hey why is there a delay in this thing this app is being managed by uber perfect so can i call this as business process management perfect so this tool which we are going to learn which is called as pega is a bpm tool what does bpm stand for business process Management. Do we understand what is business process management? Perfect. So now we understood. Okay, this is how a a, a business is managed, right? B business process management, right? Let's say uh, a specific question is understanding what is BPM all about. It's all about. Do you feel there are parties involved here, like the customer, the Uber guy who is cooking your food also is a party. You are a customer. You are also a party in this process. You know the delivery guy also is a party in this process. Do we agree? Who are the party parties here as part of this process? The parties are customer slash user who orders. And who else? For example, delivery guy, delivery person, right? Uh, chef who cooks your food, right? And uh, if there are any management who manage the application, right? all these are all these are parties of this process, right? So when they say when they say parties. This is how you understand in a process. The process is also called as as work flow. For Uber, their work is like delivering food, and their work is flowing through these steps. Yes or no? That's why they call it workflow. This thing is true for anyone. Any business, not just Uber, for Zomato. You know, this is true for uh, this is true for Zomato. And for example, any bank. For example, if you want to get a loan, loan giving bank, they also have workflow, right? Right. Any bank which is giving loan, they will have a workflow. They just don't directly give you the money. First, they do assessment. There's so many steps involved, one by one. So many processes. Once you follow that, at the the end goal is loan. We'll see that. Just trying to help you understand, taking you into the realm of what is a process and what is a workflow. Anything can be broken down into a process or a workflow. Let us see what our presentation. We saw traditional programming workflow. So this is also a workflow, right? For example, if I have to uh, take some money from ATM, what do I do? I start. I go to the ATM. I start. I click on start. Enter the card number and PIN. Okay, and verify the number and PIN. If it matches, the transaction is processed. Whatever, for example, if you are asking for hundred bucks, process process. And if it doesn't match, also it cancels and it ends. Can I call this as a flow? Right. So this is how you should start thinking. The reason why I am showing you this is so that you can start thinking on these things. These are slightly at a high level, but we'll try to see much in detail. Okay. Uh, okay. We also tried to understand what is low code, where we saw presentation, business logic, and persistence layer, even the database layer. All these are involved. But how exactly can we, you know, build applications using a platform? The platform we have chosen to learn today is Pega, right? What low code tool will we learn? It is Pega. What is Pega? Pega is a BPM tool which will help you build enterprise applications without need to know of any coding platform. Without know, uh, knowing any coding platform, you can build enterprise application applications like Uber Eats. 
let's try to see if we can build something like that okay i have my instance up and running where is this Just install it with a Uber application. Let's do it for Uber Eats. Let's try to see if we can create something for Uber Eats. Okay, it's giving me. Don't worry about this. We'll do it again. But just to show you guys. I'm just trying to create an application where using which we'll be building a workflow like that. Okay. This is the user interface of Pega. Okay. We'll go in much detail just to show you a, a bird view, you know, a 36,000 view of what exactly it looks like, you know, nothing to uh, take away from here just to see how exactly it is done. Because I will have to log in using this. Now I'm logging into the application for Uber, whatever we created, it's asking me to change the password because the password is busy right now. Perfect. So now I logged into uh, Pega for Uber application. Am I able to see application name as Uber here? Okay. So let's say let's switching back. So what are we looking for? We want to order food and we want to know how exactly can I build something which makes sense, right? On those lines. So so these are the steps which are involved in booking a order, right? Find your address, place an order, confirm the order, payment, and delivery. Make sense? So if I have to put these steps into a enterprise application, that shouldn't be a really challenging task. So if I say, Uber Eats is one of the case steps which you want to create. Interface type. Just see how I'm trying to do it. Nothing to like, you know, remember or note down or anything. Just showing you the ease of using the software and how exactly you can build something which makes sense. Okay. This is a initial class just for understanding of what product you're trying to learn. Okay. We'll be building a real time enterprise application uh, from scratch, you know, end to end. But this is just to help you understand how exactly it is done. You might be asking why should I learn this instead of something else like SAP or Python or anything, right? But the demand for this is very high. That is the reason we have to do it. So 
what would be my first step the first step is uh, look up location right i have to look up the location and what are we doing and we are placing the order okay so let's see place The next stage, what would you do? You would confirm this order, right? So let's say it's approved and reject start of shipping. Like you either you will confirm or you will say no. You will say yes or you will say no, right? So it has to be approve or reject start of shipping. Right? Confirm. Order. Right. And then what is the next step? Payment. Right? And then payment is delivery. Payment. Step is you take delivery, right? Right. Perfect. Just see how long am I taking to build something like this. Do we agree to this thing? We create, we confirm, we pay, and we get the delivery. Is it the same thing which we wrote here? Perfect. So, So we have written the same thing here, right? Let us try to run this. It should run me. Something which you have to focus on here is in seeing like how exactly the steps which we discussed here, we were able to put it across onto our application to build an enterprise application. What did we do? We created an application for Uber and then we created a case which talks about Uber Eats, right? It should load also, there is some issue. Not sure what this.
that's fine. So looks like there's some issue I'll try to check this. But something which a takeaway from today's class should be like you know you need to understand what we are trying to achieve as part of the So what did we do? We did you know, understand what is the software all about, right? And we understood what is BPM all about, right? Uh, what does BPM, Business Process Management stuff stand for, right? And we also understood in a software, we do have a user interface, a database, a business logic, right? And what languages are necessary to achieve that, right? And what is a low coding platform? A platform where you don't have to do coding of whatever we did here the day we described the the way we described the steps here did we use any of the coding languages to write any of these steps for uber eats right we didn't use any of that and we exactly depicted the steps which are necessary to book a order right very simple use case but if you see in your real lifetime so many places where we are having manual approaches which can be transformed into applications like this right using tools like this we can transform that and put it into an application like this yes or no right perfect so so that is a takeaway from today's class the second thing is what are we going to cover as part of this particular uh, course uh, it's an in-depth course for this particular product right uh, like I said, uh, why do you have to learn it? Ex extremely hard in today's job market. Coding is not needed. Easy to build applications and easy to perform changes. Any change you want to do, you can easily do it. And it's very easily adaptable for dynamically changing processes. Right? Why, what do I mean by saying dynamically changing processes? For example, if you are having a foreign exchange application, like every day the dollar rate, the exchange rate keeps changing. You can't keep writing an application for every day's changes, right? You should be having application which can dynamically adapt such changes, right? It can, you can, you should be able to on the fly change the, uh, the uh, whatever is the rate today. Like, you know, application should be smart enough to pick up such changes. That is what we mean when we say dynamically uh, adaptable changes, right? Um, the speed in which you can build this application is really fast. You know using this particular platform that is why we have chosen this it's proven there's so many jobs there are close to 3 lakh bpm jobs which are coming in market right now just uh, for you to uh, you know, explore more and get get placed right 3 lakh more so what does the course have it has like we discussed today bpm and pegas overview you know and then we'll go step by step in detail in understanding what this particular platform has to offer uh, in terms of uh, what are different components in this product how exactly you can use them to build enterprise applications right uh, in the same way if you, if you keep going further there, is, there are much detailed concepts like SAS structure data modeling you know case management are some uh, higher level concepts which I have uh, put down in this particular slide I'll be showing you for people who are interested who are who want to take up this, these classes further uh, I'll be uh, conducting uh, the, uh, this is these are the course details which we'll be covering as part of this. You can also find this on uh, our website. UPM focus here is on our website. You can find this on that also. And okay, you can see this is the uh, the course duration. It usually pans around two to three months. Depending upon uh, how exactly, what is the pace on which we cover. For example, not everyone can understand the concepts in just in one go. Sometimes you will have to repeat few concepts. That time it usually takes around two and a half months like that. If uh, people are uh, able to grasp it on the first go, then we try to wrap it up as soon as possible. We do some you know mock interview sessions where we uh, I conduct mock interview sessions with you guys and also help you understand how exactly you can create certification. Uh, help you build your resume uh, so that you can you know apply in the today's market help you understand uh, of course it will help you with opportunities where they are trying to hire folks like you how you can you know uh, tone your uh, resume so that you can 
uh, get a job uh, as soon as possible. I think cert without certificate, it's like, you know, uh, does a degree, is a degree mandatory for any job? Yes, that's what the NARC, yeah, I, I know, I'm not, yeah. So it, I, it is mandatory. You know why? You know why? Because it gives, for example, if you are only hiring, for example, if you're hiring someone on PEGA and you have a person who is certified, you have another person who is not certified, who will you pick? You will, of course, pick the certified guy. You know why? Because you know that he has invested in this technology to learn better. How do you know that? Because he's certified. See what I'm saying? And they are looking only there. It's a mandate now. If you want to get into the IT IT industry, they want to make sure that you have the certification. So I would say I would strongly recommend if you have intentions of taking certification, only then you can make a full benefit out of it. If you already have a job and then if you have an employer, they can give you vouchers also. You can reimburse those uh, these, these courses also. I mean that they these certifications. No issues with that. I'll help you out with those also. Don't worry about that. But be keen on you know learning this particular product in detail, and uh, we we will walk you through. I'll give you the software also uh, to, for you to install and you know try your hands hands on. Uh, we'll be doing the real time enterprise application end to end, understand how exactly each and every component is built, and uh, we'll go over from there. If you guys have any questions, I can see. Sorry. Uh, see, after you are done, how many, I mean, uh, your question is how many months will be this course or what is it? In resume, oh, like that. Okay, it depends on how, how which exact company you are trying to, uh, which is, who is hiring. For example, if your companies are come looking for two plus years, then you will have to go for two plus years. If companies are looking for freshers at that time you don't need to add any huge, huge experience sometimes you have three years experience then you need to see how exactly you have to tweak your resume you should always work based on who you who is hiring you you need to look at what is the criteria put the same thing so that the, at that time the chances of you get your resume getting selected is high because the recruiters exactly do the match of their criteria with the resume if it matches only they'll take it further that is the reason you have to do that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In real time you can manage at least uh, a two plus years experience guys development uh, aspects you can easily manage anything above that if you get you can reach out to us we will help you out or there are other ways using which you can solve the problem it's all about how you can think the think of the problem and how you can come out with a solution so very first thing is understanding requirement you know when they give you a requirement you should be able to easily understand it you need to first focus on that and i will teach you how exactly you have to look at a requirement how to break that because sometimes what i have seen with most of my clients is they don't understand the requirement because that application itself is so new to them they don't understand what is being asked from them you know so when they say okay can you complete this story is what they say but what exactly is being asked there they don't understand that's why they find hard to build once you know what is the problem you know, understand the problem statement, building is very easy. Perfect. So, uh, if uh, if this interests you guys, you guys I mean, anyone who, who is interested, I do have a uh, few interests already. Uh, what timing would be best for you guys? Morning hours, I'm feeling like morning hours like this time 8 a.m. is something which I'm trying to target on. Uh, if this is okay, we can continue on this and we can uh, uh, start full fledged from Monday. Are you guys okay? Yes, no? Perfect. Uh, any Anything else? Ask questions? There is no need of coding uh, coding uh, experience at all. You don't need coding to build any of these applications. Even then, I will teach you. Sorry. 
yes that there is very less coding if you already know a few coding languages it is good but you don't need to know any coding you don't need coding as such to build anything here you know you don't have to know coding you can build applications with a of this process what i did did you see me using any of the coding languages right that's it we didn't use any of you will see like whenever there is such any change like that i'll also help you understand what exactly is being done once you understand right if you see coding also is being done by humans only it's not something which aliens are doing you know it's very easy to it's uh, it's all about who is explaining if you see in your college few few challenging topics but lecturers who are good they explain it very simply but sometimes you see very simple topics but because this that lecturer doesn't understand it well he explains it in a complicated way haven't you faced that in your life right it's all about that it's just about that it's very easy i can tell you i can guarantee you there are people who have transformed their lives who have ended up in like you know the basic packages of like you know they start from 5 lakhs to 15 lakhs is what uh, they have been making you know and it's definitely a very good opportunity that not even going to take you long time it's just like you know uh, uh, two months time just give dedicate that time for this particular product and i can assure you that uh, you guys will definitely be benefiting from this make sense sure yeah no problem no problem uh, uh, most of my students are commerce guys so don't worry you can reach out to me sure i'm i'm writing it here if you guys are interested you can note it down no pro okay perfect so my contact number is plus one eight four eight two one nine nine three six nine you can contact me on whatsapp plus eight four eight two one nine nine three six nine yeah it's going to end in three minutes yeah perfect yeah whoever is interested please ping me on this number and confirm so that i'll be uh share, like you know sending you the link for coming monday like tomorrow we are going to start full, full fetch from tomorrow so tomorrow 8 a.m the classes are starting so just share yes yes we can provide i can provide i'll be uploading it to uh, this thing you know uh, a drive and i'll be sharing you the link no worries perfect okay thank you also let any if you have any friends please let them know so that they can also benefit from this okay thank you that's it and uh, we'll be starting the classes from tomorrow thank you thanks bye